Welcome to Southwest Iceland. Um, I'm in an area that's pretty obscure, although it lies just off the road, uh, the Golden Circle tour that so many people take when they come here. Uh, this is a little gully next to a location called Lagervatn Scheller. I'm probably butchering that, but I'll make sure I put the correct um, spelling and such in the notes. Uh, this is a really remarkable geologic location. Thanks for joining me today. My name is Sean Wilsey. I'm a geology professor. Um, and here in Iceland, a lot of the volcanic landforms uh, came about because of volcanoes that erupted beneath glaciers, beneath ice. During the last ice age and even prior to that, glacial periods when ice covered the entire uh, landmass of Iceland, these volcanoes that erupted um, produce some really unique landforms that you can see as you start looking around the location. So let's look at some observations here and then let's see if we can piece this together. So what I have in front of me here is uh, an area of basalt, volcanic rock, uh, but if you look closely you'll see that there's a lot of somewhat circular or oval shapes in here. Um, we look around a little bit more, it's sort of like there's these blobs forming in all sorts of places in this, um, in this outcrop. As we work our way up the cliff face though, we can see there's a sharp and dramatic change from the blobs and the ovals here to more fragmented shattered rock with different sizes uh, up just up above us. And this gully provides just a dramatic and beautiful example of exactly what happens when these volcanoes erupt beneath ice. Now previously I did a video where I explained these in a lot of detail. Um, these are called, these landform features are called uh, tuyas if it's one centralized vent from a volcano. And if it's erupting along a fissure or linear trend, it's called a tindar. So what we have here with these blobs and ovals and kind of crazy shapes here, these are pillow lavas. These are actually places where the lava interacted with the ice, but there was so much ice sitting on top of the volcano that the lava couldn't fragment and break. And even though it was the lava was melting the ice and turning it to water, the pressure of the overlying ice kept it from behaving or becoming explosive. And so if we look at this closely, what we'll see is there's glassy rinds along the edge of these individual pillows. There's some brown colored material along the edges of these pillows. This is a material called pelagonite. It's an alteration product from where the glassy basalt interacted with the water. Nice little one right here. Um, on the inside, we can see that they have gas bubbles or what we call vesicles. Um, this one even has some nice little green crystals of olivine in it. Um, and so pillow lavas is the name that we call these um, interactions with, in this case, ice, but also water. Um, some places the, the pillars are more rounded. In other places, they're, they're oval because they're being squished. The overlying pillow basalts are actually pushing down on them. Let's work our way down the gully and maybe make a few more observations with the pillow lavas. And then we'll look at the other material. And then I'll finish up with a little uh, human history connection to these rocks and this location. But here again, you can see some of these rounded shapes. In places, they look like tubes coming this way because these are the conduits that the lava was flowing in. So these are where the lava is being quenched and cooled by the ice uh, along the margins. That's why they get these glassy rinds around the outside. Um, but then the lava is continuing to pour through. You can also see a lot of these have um, radial fractures. So as the lava is cooling from the outside, that develops fractures perpendicular to the surface that migrate towards the center. Let's see, that one's pretty good there, but I bet we could find uh, some better ones if we hunt around a little bit. And this is just one of the better locations I've seen 
of just beautiful pillow love is this one here has some really nice radial fractures around it let's see if we can get up to this one yeah just beautiful sets of radial fractures around that one and then here's our transition so here's where the pillow lavas end and as we work our way up we see the pillow lavas aren't common and now the rock's more shattered so this indicates as the pillow lavas piled up melted more of the ice into water eventually the eruption reached a stage where the pressure of the overlying ice and water wasn't as great and the water melted water could flash to steam become fragmental and become explosive so this is the lava being shattered and broken explosively falling back down on the surface um, and forming these layers here of what's called hyaloclastite it's basically a volcanic breccia uh, mixed in with some ash as well but you can see that most of the particles are fairly large in size as we look our way up here we can see there's zones of large particles zones of mostly ash and then zones of large particles occasionally there's a few pillow lavas in there as well so this is where the two are mixing i can see a few more pillow lavas up here so um it's not all it's not a clean break but there's still a really nice transition here from the pillow lavas up to the hyaloclastites looking back across the gully you can see the sort of worm shape and tube shape of the pillow lavas as they were just oozing out beneath this glacier with the ice sitting above it um, and forming those really nice pillow lavas work our way down a little further into the gully and then end up uh, there's a cave down here with a house in it that I want to show you as well that has the, the little human history connection so more layers of the ash here a beautiful pillow lava here with the radial fractures around the margin um, wow just really spectacular outcrop here where the pillow lavas and the ash are somewhat interbedded uh, together so the pillow lavas is what you typically see at the bottom in the initial phase of these subglacial eruptions then you get these hyaloclastite volcanic breccia layers uh, and then we can't see it because it would be way way up the mountain but eventually the eruption uh, continues until you have the ash and fragmented explosive material is built up to the point where it's above the the ice and the water that's the that's been the ice that's been melted you actually have that material forming uh sub -aerially, and then it just caps the whole ridge with a typical uh, basaltic lava flow just spectacular pillows here again you can see these tube shapes the radial fractures uh, and these some of these are tubes are running across your view this way but all of them just sort of stacked on top of themselves so um, I'll go ahead and shut this down it's a couple minute walk down to the the cave with the house in it and I'll wrap up there but just beautiful pillow lavas if you're ever in this part of Iceland uh, this is just a great place to see exactly how these subglacial volcanoes begin their journey so here's the gully I just came down they had the great uh, pillow lavas with the and you can see the bedding of the hyaloclastite the fragmented uh, material sitting up above it and as you come down to the mouth of the gully uh, what you'll see is that the pillow lavas are beneath it they're in the core of this this large tindar this big mountain range and this this tindar runs for I think 25 kilometers to the north we're at the south end of this very large volcanic landform um, and as you work your way to the mouth here you can see that it's mainly these um, brecciated or hyaloclastite layers mixed in with tuff basically more fine grain material so this would represent periods of time where the energy of the eruption was 
um, you know, explosive enough to fragment material this size, and then maybe it became exceptionally explosive and was breaking it up into even smaller pieces. Um, fortunately, some people have decided to scratch their names in the rock, but I think you get the sense that this material is quite soft. And in fact, it's so soft that uh, over a hundred years ago, some native Icelanders decided to build a home in this naturally overhanging cave. So they, I think they dug it out a little bit further. I don't think anyone lives here anymore and, and it's locked at the moment, um, but you can actually see, I think they have, sometimes there's people out here that'll take you inside and give you give you a little bit of a tour. Uh, but you can see the, the little house that's set into the cave here. And there were uh, people living here um, fairly recently within the last few decades or so. So just a fantastic location. Um, the big ridge behind us, the Tindar, um, swinging around now to the, to the south. Um, I don't know what the name of the shield volcano is out here, but really nice shield volcano. Uh, and then looking out towards um, the road that's part of the, the Golden Circle Tour. So thanks for joining me on this little adventure. Uh, if you can, there's a donate button on the homepage at the top of the banner. And there's links under the video description where you can donate and help support these videos. But hope you enjoyed this little tour of this lesser known location. Unlike most of the Iceland locations where you're kind of surrounded by all the tourists, you can see uh, it's just me and the, the little white van down there in this cool little spot. But right off the road there, uh, and I'll make sure I put the GPS location on the video description. So if you want to look at it on Google Earth, or if you're coming out here sometime soon, you can check it out. So thanks again, and we'll see you next time from another location in Iceland. Thank you.